As long as we can love each other and remember the feeling of love we had, we can die without ever really going away. All the love you created is still here. All the memories are still there. You live on in the hearts of everyone you have touched and nurtured while you were here. Death ends a life, not a relationship. Gentlemen, at this time, if anybody has a cell phone or anything else that makes noise, if you could just pull it out, take a look at it, and kindly make sure that it is in silent or vibrate for the duration of our time uh, together tonight, it would be much appreciated. We also want to welcome uh, those of you who are with us uh, virtually and in spirit. I would also ask you that just if you could put anything that uh, is around you just kind of off to the side and just pretend that you're sitting here with us uh, tonight. Uh, it would be, again, very much appreciated. Those of you who know me know I begin any life celebration I'm privileged to be a part of with a good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, or good whatever. Because if we don't stop and realize that it's good and great that we gather together during the awesome times in life, as well as some of the tougher times in life, then all of this is just a, a pretty show that really doesn't mean anything. But I think all of you who are here tonight and who have been telling the stories that I've been walking around, I think you all know a little different. And so it is good and great that we gather together tonight. For those of you I haven't met yet, my name is DJ Wright, and on behalf of my family and our care team, our thoughts and prayers are, are certainly with all of you um, and will be long after you leave this place. And I, I want to first start off by saying I did not know Mark in person. As a volunteer board member for Volunteer Guardianship One-on-One, -on -one, I've learned about him uh, over the past several months. And I always like to look past sometimes what gets people into our group because there's lives and, and, and bits of that dash. You've all heard that poem, The Dash, right? It talks about the date of birth and the date of death and that everything people do in that dash None of us can truly understand everybody's dash from that beginning to that middle to what becomes the end, and we never know what it's going to be. Sometimes it's long, although it's never too long. Sometimes, as we gather here, it's a lot shorter than any of us would have wanted it to be, and it was a little tougher than any of us wanted it to be. But we're going to do a couple things tonight. I'm going to share some of the things I've learned. I'm going to do a little bit of the rite of Catholic committal. Mark was, I was hearing about his, uh, his Catholic school upbringing. <laughs> Listen, look out for the nun with the ruler. Um, so we're going to honor that uh, with some, some words that I, I think are appropriate, um, regardless of how quote-unquote religious he was. But I think going back to the earlier part of the dash uh, with your parents giving you that foundation of faith, hope, and love, we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to also open this up to any of you if you wanted to say any words. Uh, again, I remind you this is a, a space of love and of hope, and you can't really say anything wrong. So if anybody does want to share for a moment, we'll give you that opportunity um, in a little bit. I wanted to start with, uh, as you can imagine, as a, a funeral director, 
dealing with every religion and race and creed, I, I come across a lot of good readings, right? I have a book. I don't need to look for any more. But as I was ruminating on what I was going to say tonight, this popped up, and it was just not anything that was in my wheelhouse. But I read it, and I thought it was the perfect way to open tonight. And it's some words by the poet Rumi. Quote, I said, what about my eyes? He said, keep them on the road. I said, what about my passion? He said, keep it burning. I said, what about my heart? He said, tell me what you hold inside it. I said, pain and sorrow. He said, stay with it. The wound is the place where the light enters you. I know tonight is tough for a lot of people. The last several years of Mark's life were tough. I think as we go forward, we realize a lot of that was just stuff he can't, couldn't control. And I'm pretty confident that he is in a place where there's no pain, no suffering, but only light, peace, and hope. And the mark that I heard about, I think would really want you all to remember that whatever hurts you right now, that's where the light needs to come in. It needs to take you from any of the tough stuff that you're feeling right now and guide you to continue to live each day to its fullest. So it is in that spirit that we begin all good things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of hope give you all the fullness of peace, and may the Lord of life be always with you. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray now, asking God to gather Mark to himself. Lord our God, the death of our brother Mark recalls our human condition and the brevity of our lives here on earth. But for those who believe in your love, death is not the end, nor does it destroy the bonds that you forge in life. We share the faith of your son's disciples and the hope of the children of God. Bring the light of Christ's resurrection to this time of testing and pain as we pray for Mark and for those who love him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So there are two readings. One um, that's in the book and one that I kind of moved around, and I, it comes from the same spot, so I can't imagine I'm going to get in trouble. So this first is um, a gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have him recline at a table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are his servants. Because be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not let his house have been broken into. You must also be prepared for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The other Gospel, you probably are going to think this is like the ultimate funeral Gospel based on the first couple of lines, but it's actually very rarely read at funerals. Uh, it's commonly referred to as the Beatitudes, and it's a gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples, when I teach you, I teach you to remember, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are you who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you again and utter every, every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I could sit here and tell you how Mark loved Corvettes. I love Corvettes too. They're fast, they're furious, they give us energy. I could tell you about how Mark loved to travel. You see his suitcases. Uh, many people aren't happy with the airlines the last couple days, so if any of you are in there, forget about that right now. I could show you his million miles. I could show you this globe where he traveled around the world. But you all know about that. I don't need to tell you that. You shared dinners, you shared experiences. You have that. So that's not for me to say right now. These things are to remind you of what is. Not what was, but what is and will continue to be in your hearts, which are those beautiful memories that made the tapestry from Mark's date of birth to his ultimate date of passing. As a funeral director who doesn't eat often, I must say, looking at the Hard Rock t-shirts has been driving me nuts because I love their cheeseburgers. <laughs> so I'm sure Mark had fun around the world uh, collecting um, their shirts because I do the same. So let's go back to that first reading where it talks about the thief coming in the night. I kept that in the vigil service, and I normally don't. I normally try to flip everything around. But I kept that because I know for a fact that some of you in this room are feeling very robbed right now. And I need you to know that that's okay. That is an okay feeling, that it's okay to be angry, that it's okay to be sad, that it's okay to be upset at Mark, at God, at the Creator, whatever you want. But what's not okay is if you take those feelings and don't dispose of them in a healthy way, in a way that Mark really would want you to. I'm not saying you should all go out and buy a Corvette, although I think he might encourage that. <laughs> but maybe it's buying that first-class ticket and going somewhere where you haven't been for a while just because you need to get away for a little bit. Maybe it's calling up a person you haven't seen in a long time just to say, hey, because why not? The other gospel, again, blessed are they who mourn for they will be comforted, right? That's where I come. That's like the funeral gospel. But I'm going to read it again. I promise I won't read the whole thing because I'm going to take out a lot of what I consider just noise right now. The meek are going to inherit the land. If you hunger and thirst, you'll be satisfied. If you're merciful, you'll be shown mercy. If you're clean of heart, you'll see God. If you're a peacemaker, you're a child of God. Sometimes we add so much stuff and we forget about getting back to the basics. At the end of the day, Mark was cared for, loved, looked after. I said I, I haven't seen flowers from um, a nursing facility in a long time. For them to do that says a lot. And I got to believe that as Mark came to the end of his life, on whatever plane of consciousness that he was able to understand, he realized that life isn't just about the Corvettes and the Million Miles, but it's about simply trying. And the Mark that I've heard so much about Really, throughout his life, he tried. I mean, look at who works at the same job for almost 40 years, right? They loved him. They didn't even want him to go. He tried. Did he always succeed? Of course not. Are any of us always successful? Of course not. But at the end of the day, I truly believe that Mark tried. He tried the best he could with what he was able to do, and he made an impact for the better in this world. That's evidenced by all you people here tonight. I always say it doesn't matter if one person comes or a thousand. It's the quality of the hearts that are touched. And I could see the angst in a lot of your faces. That's not something that you can hide around here. I know the 
the fake crocodile tears, and I know the real tears. And I know there's a lot of heavy hearts in this room. And my heart aches for all of you too. But I need you to really stop and think and remember that the mark that you knew and loved knew and loves you too. Notice how I didn't say loved. I said loves. That is something that these readings remind us about, that faith, hope, and love continue. We're all part of the tapestry of life, ladies and gentlemen. You were part of Mark as much as Mark was a part of you. And I hope you remember that as you walk out of this door, hopefully stronger tonight, remembering that when there's a lot of noise in life, all we got to remember is that love is what makes the world go round. Is there anybody who would like to share a, a thought or a memory or a story? I know it's hard. Sure. I would just ask that you introduce yourself, let everybody know, especially for those who are, who are watching from far away. Hi, I'm Jane Bauman. I'm Mark's sister. And um, thank you all for coming here tonight. Such as my cousins, I was very taken back and surprised and happy and appreciative of you making the trip. And um, you know, I, Mark, and we were close when I'm two years younger than him when I was little, and you know, I always looked up to him. And uh, Mark had a great sense of humor, and he told stories really well and um, I used to love to listen to him tell his stories and of course he had a lot of stories because he traveled a lot and you know he had a lot of trips with Jane also his wife but I was just telling um, we were talking about him being Catholic and I said oh yeah you know I have a, um, a little ID card from we were in Catholic school and um, his picture on it, and he must have been like 10 years old or something, and it said, um, you know, in case of emer I'm a Catholic, in case of emergency, uh, please call a priest. And Mark crossed priest out and wrote doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, even as a little kid, he had a good sense of humor. So, <laughs> so well, thank you everyone for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. And of course, we send um, our love to your other sister, who I believe is watching us virtually as well. Would anyone else like to share? Okay. I've been waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting too for somebody else. <laughs> Just let everybody know who you are. Hi everyone, I'm Mavis Friederman. I'm one of the volunteers for Volunteer Guardianship 101. And I had the privilege of taking care of Mark. I was the guardian of the person, and uh, as such I kind of adopted him to my family, and our family, Volunteer Guardianship. Um, unlike DJ, who I've known for nearly 30 years, um, I haven't known Mark except for post-stroke. So for me, I kind of feel like I've been looking through this little window and I can see the mark of the present and I know there's a whole web, <laughs> you know, his lifetime before that spreads out all the relatives, all the friends, and the, but I don't know anything about them. All I can see is what's in this little room and Mark is the way he is. He's, you know, simple minded and in the present, he's living in the present. So for me tonight, um, it was really my privilege not only to take care of Mark, but my privilege to be here and just meet all of you and hear your stories because you've added color to that black and white web, you know, the unknown. I get to know like who Mark really was um, rather than just this, this little snapshot. But um, I just want you to know that I, I really did care about Mark. I don't believe that you can care for somebody without actually caring for somebody. And I truly did care about him. And he was very well loved at Foothill Acres as well. Um, the fact that they sent flowers, DJ, like you said, is, you know, his, his nurse was um, very, very upset to learn that he had passed. Um, he was just, you know, one of the gang. But, uh, <clears throat> but I want you to know that um, he, he wasn't afraid. He wasn't alone. Um, the decisions that we made, the doctor visits that we went to, 
I explained everything to him. I don't think he remembered it past that day, but in the moment he knew where we were, why we were there, and what we were doing. Um, he himself expressed interest um, in dialysis. I never thought that would be the case. You know, the fact that he never saw a doctor, didn't want to do anything with health care, didn't want to take the medicine. The one time he went, he threw it out, you know, but for sure there's no way he's going to want, you know, dialysis, be hooked up to this machine. And, and then I explained everything to him in, in very simple terms, and he said, yeah, if it works, you know, so I was like, okay. <laughs> so we had the fistula placed and we were ready to do that. Um, he, was, he was almost there, you know, at that point where he needed it, but he, he never did wind up needing it. He just kind of bumped along. Um, and of course, you all know he had a bad heart as well, but uh, he wasn't afraid. And when he had pneumonia, it was when he was transferred to Robert Wood Johnson. And he was very sick, sick but he still didn't know it. I went in to see him in ICU the first time, and I said, buddy, you know, hey, buddy, I was worried about you. And he looked at me and he said, why? <laughs> it's because you're so sick, you know? But for him, it was, it was okay. It wasn't scary, you know? But I did stay overnights with him in ICU, and um, at the end, you know, all systems were failing. They wanted to put him on life support, and I said no. I, I know he wouldn't want that. Um, he's, he's had enough of the BiPAP and the high flow oxygen. He didn't like even that. It was, you know, he tried to take the mask off at night. So um, he said no. So we, we moved Mark to a private room, and again, I stayed there. and. Um, I felt like I needed to cover all my bases because I didn't have that, the memories and the knowledge of all you guys in his history. It's hard to guess where he was at. So, you know, we did have soft lighting and soft music and um, we prayed. I prayed with him, you know, just in case. And I, I pulled up the jerry chair and held his hand and, and that's how we kind of fell asleep. And um, that was when he passed. So his passing was very, very peaceful and he wasn't alone, he wasn't afraid. But again, thank you all for coming and giving color to that, you know, to Mark's life, really. And coming to honor him. Thank you, Mavis. And I think that was a beautiful way of explaining it, adding color. Uh, <laughs> and to the other guardians who are here tonight, I see you all nodding your heads because you get it. It's We only get some of that brief insight, but to really... Uh, get more of, of that dash um, is beautiful for, for everybody involved. Um, so thank you for, for sharing. Is there anybody else who'd like to share? Okay. I know that's difficult, difficult thing, um, but I would encourage all of you, if you have any other memories uh, that you want to share with family or friends, you can always go uh, to Mark's uh, permanent memorial site uh, on our website and um, leave a, a memento or, or some pictures or whatever you want there. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Sure. My name is Karen Rudar. I am Mark's cousin. Mark's dad and my dad were cousins. And between the two gentlemen, there were 10 of us. And we grew up together at my grandparents' house and Mark's grandparents' house. They, they lived together, the four of them. And so we spent many, many weekends and evenings at their house, playing cards, drinking Yoo-Hoo, playing, <laughs> playing next door. And I guess I come from the beginning part of the dash in his life. And no matter... It was from that family that we all learned the value and the importance of family. And as we've gotten older and we've gone our separate ways and we haven't stayed in touch as much as we'd like to, the one thing I think that comes back is that when we do see each other, we realize how important family is. So we were glad to share this time with Anne and with, Anne and with Jane. Thank you so much, and I can attest that is true in my own life as well. You know, you don't see your cousin's time and space pulls apart, but those memories of childhood are so important to who we are and what we become. I'm still picturing him pulling out that card. Don't call the priest, call the doctor. <laughs> Somehow I'm not shocked that he did that, all the stories I've been hearing. <laughs> 
Let us come back to a, a moment of prayer. And if you can, let your response to the following petitions be, Lord, have mercy. Risen Lord, pattern of our life forever, Lord, have mercy. Promise an image of what we shall be, Lord, have mercy. Son of God who came to destroy sin and death, Lord, have mercy. Word of God who delivered us from the fear of death, Lord, have mercy. Crucified Lord, forsaken in death, raised in glory, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd, who bring rest to our souls, Give peace to Mark forever, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bless those who mourn and are in pain. Bless Mark's family and friends who gather around him today, Lord, have mercy. My brothers and sisters, our true home is in heaven. Therefore, let us pray to our Heavenly Father as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I think of your mom and dad at this point as well, and i got to believe that all those who've gone before... Um, I, I don't know. People ask me all the time, what do you, what do you think, Deej? You must have some insight because you're a funeral director. Actually, no. I have less insight. I'm more scared of death than anybody. But I don't know if heaven's a bunch of clouds or music playing or any of that stuff. But what I do truly believe is that the energy and the spirit and the beauty of all those we loved who've gone before, I think they're waiting for us somewhere. I don't know where. don't know how. I don't know how it all works. But I believe they're there. And I believe your mom and your dad and all those people that Mark loved were right there ready to scoop him up. Tell him it's okay. And that no more pain, no more physical suffering, it's all good. So it's in that hope that we ask for the blessing of the mother of us all. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death, so all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Mark into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One, you are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive Mark his sins and grant him a place of happiness, light, and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord, says the Spirit. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto Mark, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep all of your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God the Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remain with you now and forever. Amen. So as I was thinking about how we would kind of uh, conclude our time uh, together, you know, I I go back to, I have almost too many things to, to fall back on. And not knowing somebody makes it a little, a little different. But as I was thinking, I I was just flipping through, just trying to get some ideas. And I keep a a prayer card of a colleague of mine from upstate New York uh, who actually died at his desk writing somebody's obituary. And it always interests me what funeral directors put on the back of their cards because, again, they have millions of things to choose from, right? So what, what touches their souls? And this was a gentleman I admired. Um, I respected him. He, family man, built a business from the ground up, did a lot of good to help heal hearts, which is what we've always tried to do here. And so when I got his prayer card, I I bowled it and I put it in my book and I said, I'm going to use this one appropriate. And I think now is, and I actually don't read it quite often, um, but I'm going to read it tonight because I think, I really think given everything that has gone on with Mark from baby 
to the rest of it, to the end end. I think this is what he would want us to remember when you walk out the door tonight. And the quote uh, on the back of Mr. Ferguson's prayer card is by the author Mitch Alwam who wrote Tuesdays with Maury. And it says, as long as we can love each other and remember the feeling of love we had, we can die without ever really going away. All the love you created is still here. All the memories are still there. You live on in the hearts of everyone you have touched and nurtured while you were here. Death ends a life, not a relationship. So it's my hope and prayer that all of you tonight go back out into the world stronger than when you came in. Go back out remembering all the good that was and continues to be. And that however many more miles you go, however many times you zip around the globe, whether you get there by a Honda or a Corvette, you move with light in your heart. You let whatever pain you have now be an opening for only goodness to enter. And I think in that way, we truly honor our brother. Hold for dear life, yeah, the days turn to night. If you were by my side, it's not as cold to live or die. Would you leave me lonely? Be the one to hold me. If this were the end of our love, would you still be there when the world falls apart? Would you find me the stars burning out in the sun?